Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Intro to Computer Science. Today we're going to take a look at how to uh, make it so that when you double click on a row it pops up an account details page with all of the details about that specific account since right now we only display four basic pieces of information. Uh, Alright, so to get started let's go ahead and take a look at the method we created last time that was account table mouse clicked. When account table mouse clicked uh, happens, we set the account buttons active. That was the only thing we did. But you have a lot more uh, functionality that you can do in here. For example, you can check if evt dot click count ah, click count is equal to two. If it is, that would indicate that a double click happened. That's when our event is going to fire. When you double click on it, that's when we're going to create our account details page. Uh, I say create, I mean display. So let's go ahead and set up our account details page and then we'll go ahead and take care of the code right there. It's going to be a J dialog just like we've been doing for the rest of them because we want it to block. We don't want you to be able to do other stuff while these account details pages are open. Otherwise you could open as many as you want and we don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to call it my account details. Um, I'll call it page. It's a page. That's what it is. All right. And much like we've been doing with the other ones, we're going to make it a grid layout. Now we need to think about what pieces of information we're going to want to display. Uh, if I open up customer, customer has a first name, last name, social security number, and account. So at least three fields from here. Uh, let's go ahead and check out account. That has balance, interest, account number, and transaction fee. So one, two, three, four, plus the three from the other, that's seven. So why don't we make seven fields? Okay, so um, these are all going to be, oh, you know what? Before I do that, let's handle our grid layout. Two columns, eight rows, because seven of data, and then the OK cancel button. Actually, there's just an OK button. There's no cancel option. OK. Now, when I'm adding these here, I need to add 14 labels and then an OK button at the bottom. And the OK button, in this case, is going to do what the cancel button normally does and then just dispose of this window. All right, so this.dispose. All right, I'm going to change the variable name. It's going to be OK button. I'm going to change this to say first name. last name social security number uh, account number you know what I want to do I actually want to make this bigger count type account number balance interest rate and I need to expand the rows to nine this should say transaction B okay F2 So all of these fields are going to be empty, which basically makes them invisible. They're not actually empty, they're just not, um, they don't have any information in it as of now. Now there's two ways you can go about doing this. There's a binding option where you can bind them to values, which is probably the better way to do it. Um, but for the purpose of this program, I haven't gone through and done that. We may go back and refactor that in later. So I'm going to change this to first name label 
and then I'm going to say first name field, last name label, last name field, SSN label, SSN field, type label, type field, account number label, account number field, balance label, balance field, interest label, interest field, fee label, fee field. All right, now that boring part's over. So now what we need to do is here in the account details page, when you launch it, we want to say set location relative to parent. So it opens in the middle of the screen. And then we're going to want to say, uh, we want to set all, so we're going to need a customer. Let me clearly explain what I'm doing. Um, we need a customer to be passed into the account details page because otherwise there's no point in having the account details. If you don't have a valid customer, there's no details to display. Um, but when you pass a customer in, we need to set those fields to the value from the customer. Um, we don't need any Thing else to be holding on to the customer so we'll just use it the one time and then get rid of it uh, so for example we're going to say first name field dot set text to customer dot get first name last name field dot set text to customer dot get last name uh, SSN field dot set text customer dot get SS in, uh, and it gives us an error because our customer doesn't have a getter for SSN. You can just right click and go to refactor, encapsulate fields and add that. And that will clear up the error. Then uh, I think the next option we had was account type. So type, and I don't have to do them in order. Um, I'm just choosing to do so. Set it to customer dot get account dot get account type. Okay, so get account type is a non-existent method. Um, why don't we make that a public abstract string get account type? Okay, that'll cause checking and savings to get an error because they need to implement the method. And when they do that, they will just return their account type. Okay. Account type is a variable I already declared in both of them um, as just a string of what their account type is. So that does already exist. It makes it super easy to get it. We just had to add the getter. Um, once we have that, we can set the account number field text to customer dot get account dot get account number and it'll give us an error because uh, it is an int and it can't convert it to a string string dot value of will let us do that you could also do this shorthandedly um, by just saying that plus the integer it would work um, I don't like doing it that way I like using string dot value of I think that it's cleaner um, but I mean, it won't cause an issue that I can see at least. Um, so we have the type, the account, and then we need the balance field dot set text to string dot value of customer dot get account dot get balance. Okay. Um, we might want to format that string dot format percent point to F comma K 
Okay, that's our balance. Um, I'm going to copy this because our interest field is going to be the same thing except get interest. Uh, actually, our interest is just string dot value of our interest times 100 plus a percent sign. Okay, the last one, fee field, that is a dollar amount. And in that case, we want percent to F and it'll be dot get transaction fee. Uh, if we wanted, we could put the dollar signs at the beginning. So dollar sign, dollar sign. Okay, now when we run our code, uh, well, won't work yet. We have to display our account details page. So what do we do for all of the other ones when we want to do that? Um, we have to get a customer. So right here, um, looks like in all of the cases we get our selected row. So let's do that same thing. Um, okay, in selected row gets our selected row. We get the customer from that row. Uh, if the customer is not equal to null, then we want to do account details page. Um, we'll call it page instead of menu is a new account details page this true customer and we do not need to reload a customer data when we get back from it okay so now I have an error in here why ah the main again let's go ahead and get rid of that now we can go ahead and run it when you add an account for David Smith If you click a single time, nothing happens, but if you double click it, so if you double click it, it should bring it up, but we got a problem um, because these are doubles and I said percent point to F, didn't I? Uh, so on this page right here, I think it's supposed to be D, not F. Wait, hold on. I'm going crazy here. You just need, you don't need string dot value of because you are doing string dot format. There we go. Now let's try it. David Smith, social security number, and initial deposit. When you click once, nothing happens other than the buttons being enabled. But if you double click, well, we still have a problem. right here. Legal format precision exception. I don't think D is the right one to use. String up. Well, here, let's pull up uh, the Java docs. Okay. It takes a format string which is what we want to look at. Okay. Numeric. Maybe applied to floating point. Well, that, why didn't the F work then? Um, Yeah, that's what I thought. D is a decimal integral, which won't work. Um, F is what we want. So why didn't that work? Percent point two F. Can't go back far enough to see it. It was a previous run. So let's run it again. Let me get the error. Uh, I glazed over it too fast. Should have read it. When you, oh, well, that time it worked. 
All right, David Klein, there's his social security. His account type is checking, that's his balance. Uh, an account number, his interest rate and transaction fee. If I add another account for uh, Cheryl Sims. Uh, okay, so if I click her account, it brings up her information. If I click his account, it brings up his information. Um, if I click them a single time, nothing happens. Uh, let's try sorting them and then clicking Sims. Still brings up the correct account. Um, let's go ahead and set the title for this to be account details page. Actually, yeah, it's fine. If we wanted to be fancy, we could in the title say the customer's name. Um, do we want to do that? Mm. It's not much more work. Let's do it. Okay, so come here at the beginning and say set title. Yeah, let's set the title to uh, string dot format percent s oh, percent s. Actually, let's say account details page dash percent s space percent s, and then let's do customer dot get first name, customer dot get last name. All right. So now the title should, let's test it real quick. The title should contain the user's name in it. Account details page for David Smith. Cool. That works the way I want. Um, when it's short, it doesn't quite show it all, but that's fine. Um, okay. So I think everything looks good with that. When you hit OK, it closes it out. Um, anything else we can think of that might be wrong with that? No, it seems good. All right, so it looks like we have that function functionality. Um, we have the ability to add, remove counts, make deposits, make withdrawal. We can double click on an account and see the account details for it. Um, the only thing we have left to do now is add save and load functionality and then we'll be able to uh, distribute this application if we wanted. People would be able to share files and they'd be able to uh, modify all the account information uh, that we allow. Um, obviously they can't change social security numbers right now. That might be something in the future we would add but at the moment it's not in the plan. So uh, if you have any questions about what we've done today, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. While you're down there, make sure to give this video a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe for more videos on computer science and for the finale to this bank application series. Take it easy, guys. Yeah.